Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to go and continue the two against the Overlord campaign. We are at uh, a crossroad. Uh, we are looking at a couple of options here. Tapcat has uh, given me the reins to de decide which of the guerrilla ops we're going to take. And upon closer reflection, I think a scientist and specifically the countering of uh, the dark event that increases intel costs is quite helpful. Uh, we got a lost side trip on this mission, which in itself is fun. So might take that ultrasonic lure with us uh, just to make it a bit more interesting. And we got the prime team for me, at least. Uh, we got a Hogbite x 6 Implacable. Spectre is with us again. Um, we're putting a Zapper, this time Redline in, and Trojan, uh, named after uh, condoms or the lack thereof. I don't know what the uh, parents of her thought, but yeah, that's at least our um, wonderful team. So let's jump into it. It's going to be a tough one uh, as we are racing against the clock with a transmitter mission. But it should be fun. I very much like these missions. All right, we landed. So, as always, you will see that this is a quite time intense mission. The transmitters are available. One, two, a couple maybe over here. But we gotta rush this as fast as possible whilst also going through all of uh, the potential enemies that are here. Let's take a look. There now. Trojan moves forward and moves again. Oh, we got the loss. Well, that is not as bad as it might seem. High ground here for heavy weapon. Um, AKA Marine. Then we got Spectre. Certainly got Hogbite on the side here. Implacable. I wonder, do we want to pit, put another uh, one on high ground? Potentially not. I think we're just going to sprint. Okay, well, hmm. I'm almost sure that if we're going here, we're going to trigger. Might as well go all the way to here. There might be someone over here. We still got some time, so Again, I wonder. Position confirmed. What is happening over here? More losses. Okay, well, I mean, we can work with that. Okay. Running. Even more losses. Okay. Look, uh, we need, we need a great position, so Grenadier will move up here, or Zapper will move up there. Pretty sure we're going to see a Chosen as well. Okay, so it's only lost. Maybe I over dramatically planned. Did you see that one? All 
right, bring it on, Lost. Oh, I forgot we... Oh, no, wait, we do have headshots. Uh, I'm getting so confused sometimes in my own mission, uh, in my own campaigns, I'm playing without the No Lost headshot mod, and here we do have it, so... In which case, our sniper... No, that's five hit points. In which case, our sniper can just start cleaning up. Not too shabby. All right, six to eight. Start to get the ones uh, with uh, low hit points first. Alright, continuing to just decimate all of them. We got a free reload, so might as well use that. Seven... Three, that guy needs to die. Not very surprising. Our sniper is going to town on the lost. Well, I am going to be impressed once we know whether there is a chosen in uh, in this map. Currently, it looks like a very simple uh, mission. Good, we want to get those uh, two guys. Easy. Free reload, okay, cool. Well, next up, Hogbite needs to go and work for his money. You know what? Let's just get up uh, some more uh, focus for him. Unfortunately, media attacks do not reset. Unless, of course, you do have um, cereal, which he does not. Sending in the open here is a bit of a risky maneuver. And hence, we're going to take cover. Also, let's just deal with uh, these ca uh, capacitators. But we do have plenty of time, I mean, it's not even close. Okay, if it's just a loss, then this is a complete, uh, completely easy mission. So, Top of my rage. 
Hogbite does have Blade Storm now. Which also means, yeah, yeah, just attract all of them. Which also means we're going to do a little trick here. Hogbite parries and reload, brace, and Hogbite is being hit with uh, the lure. You can lure your own uh, people. Hogbite is now, yeah, targeted with that, which in return means every single lost on the map will always flock to him because he's the only one targeted. And that in return means Hogbite will get a field day on them with Bladestorm. So that just solved our entire problem with the losts in uh, just one rather unorthodox uh, way of using the ultrasonic lure. Okie dokie, we are slowly but surely moving on. Overwatch. And Overwatch. Now there are of course a little bit more tough ones. Wouldn't go down in just one in just one hit. But yeah, we can soften these guys up. And I think Cockbite will accumulate a few kills here. Kill yep, there we go. Ultra hardcore slaughter mode enabled. What? That is not how it's supposed to happen. I was. Oh wow, okay. Well, maybe the proficiency classes uh, patched something out, uh, but you can definitely, I assure you, can definitely uh, mark your own operative with uh, the lures. Well, try to be too smart for my own goods, and therefore need to wear the badge of shame for uh, taking damage on a lost uh, mission. The idea was good though. Cheeky, but good. And we're slowly but surely killing all of uh, these guys. Yeah, my bad. I really thought uh, the lure would uh, be helpful here. So much for creative use of weapons. Reload. Moves down. Kills this guy. Moves back up. What a shame. 
complete unnecessary injury for implacable. Good, Hogbite. Uh, you know what? Let's just see. That could be a kill. Of course it is not. That's a kill. And then we're just moving here for Bladestorm. Okay. That's how it's done. Fury in the slaughterhouse is hot by waltzes through them. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Uh, okay, plant the C4. Great. Signal confirmed. Export charges are active. Neutralize all enemy targets. Okay, no problem. Good, I think we can just overwatch here. Well, that was potentially the easiest mission ever in existence and I still managed to not flawless uh, it. I think there are just a few more losses and that's about it. Yeah, there's one on the rooftop. And end of turn. All right, bring it on. More meat for the meat grinder. Okay, uh, yeah, we got it. It's all right. Lots of loot, cool. Good, we'll move to here. He's the kingpin, the one that we cannot uh, one-shot. Um, yeah, let's just stand here so that everybody needs to go through the door and we'll trigger Overwatch, uh, Blade Storm. But yeah, same deal. Should be far enough away from the kingpin to not uh, receive any hits.
Okay, well, it's... Yep, it's a lot of uh, hits. One down. Two down. Kill. Unfortunately, minimum damage. Good, two more remaining. <coughs> Correction, one more remaining. And that should be it. Yeah, it was really played excellent. I am still ashamed of uh, the mistake with the uh, with the ultrasonic lure. I promise you, the ultrasonic lure uh, will also mark your own operatives if you hit it without any mods. It, uh, classical War of the Chosen that hits your own operatives and enemies at the same time. I can definitely guarantee that uh, the loss will also take your operative. Maybe it has to do with the mods, maybe it has to do with just no other enemies uh, there. Good, Trojan. Uh, once per turn, get a non-movement uh, action point refund after killing a stunned or disoriented target. That's a cool ability for uh, that Stormtrooper, because if you also go with prep for entry, now uh, you can essentially flashbang them then charge in and basically kill someone and continue so it's an interesting play style i like the relentless one which is the same uh, killing with melee weapons uh, because that can trigger more often it doesn't have the side conditions of being stunned or disoriented you can trigger disoriented with aoe suppression for instance from the marine um, or with the disorientation protocol, so sweep and clear is not bad at all. Um, but relentless, oftentimes, is just more applicable. This here, unbreakable, absolute A plus ability. We're going to spend 20 points in it. Uh, immune to panic, stun, and mind control. It's a built-in, um, built-in uh, mind uh, shield. So, yeah. Not even a question. Were high, and yet you have exceeded them. Proving the bond, I like that. Because it also means from bond level 2 onwards, uh, if they go together onto a covert action mission, uh, it'll be faster. And since Hogbite has the tendency to be the guy who receives all of uh, the bony uh, from the covert action missions, um, that would actually mean more bony. So, pretty good. I like it. Engineer, uh, yeah, thank you. We're investigating that very thoroughly. If there was one thing your father always kept in mind, it was his faith in humanity. He knew we could win. 146. Um, what can, what could we build? Resistance comms, certainly. <coughs> so, let's put an engineer here and build resistance comms. Might as well speed that up, to be honest, because we are currently struggling with not enough resistance uh, uh, resistance comms available. Black market is back, which is good. Uh, we're still going for the engineer first. Shit. 
Shielded power coil. I mean, look. <coughs> If we were to go with um, with psionics, then the shielded power coil would definitely be helpful. The other option is um, the other option is the shadow chamber, but you know we could also build it down here. <coughs> Yet another option is just a normal power relay, which would get more power. So let's do that. <coughs> Not completely optimal, but uh, still okay. And we are excavating this here, not only for the Elarium, but also for the many other good side effects that we do have um, when having another shielded power coil available. This could either be the shadow chamber or uh, the psi chamber. I'm not sure if Tapcat really wants to do psionics. Potentially not. He's not the biggest psionics fan. And this run here feels more like we are fighting against psionics instead of we are bringing the ultra psionics to the table. Um, love that, but I would love uh, upgrades more. We still have experimental ammunition. Um, might go with another experimental ammo afterwards. Our research was a success, Fantastic, that's great. I love it. Ooh. That would be for spider suits and uh, for a couple of others as well. Plus one hit point. I like it. So. We're continuing. Our cooperation has proven to be a boon to the resistance. <laughs> okay, whew. so what else can we get? Contact to new regions are made instantly. Uh, yes, I think we're going to do that. Let's see what would be great. Nine dodge isn't bad. Yeah, but this one here is better. So, tech specialist, the one that can actually require a higher hacking stat. Eh, I don't want to send the Reaper onto this mission. We're putting an average uh, schmo on this mission. And that'll be okay. Uh, it's a good reward. Uh, we should start uh, going for a few more of those core missions, but yeah, this here is going to help us a lot. It's a great resistance order. Let's just hope your people can keep up. In the meantime, yeah, we got a nice uh, upgrade. This, the major rank uh, for the Zephyrus is the weakest one in my perspective. It has interesting abilities, but requires you to very much know what you're doing. So either acid uh, grenades are causing uh, robotic targets to take two damage. So it's kind of putting a, uh, mm, a corrosion effect on it almost like a rupture effect, or burning grenades have a chance to cause uh, organic uh, creatures to panic, or gas grenades cause organic targets to be stunned for one action on their following turn, um, which means they kind of lose one action, really. It's like tactical analysis, sort of. Whilst I really like this one here, um, it, it requires you to uh, go ahead with acid uh, grenades, and yeah, oftentimes you're just using normal um, grenades to begin with. So I don't know. This one here, burning isn't bad, but and chemicals are not bad either. Chemicals are already good as they are. Um, however, there is a dark event that makes all Advent immune to chemicals and burning. So from that point onwards, you could also use uh, the acid uh, grenade for extra damage. You know, for the purpose of this run, 
I think our biggest challenge will be heavier tar uh, heavier armored enemies so might as well use that not the biggest fan of either of them as I mentioned but it's also it's a free talent so it's not like it's not like you're losing anything in the progress Okay, maybe oh, that's a small mistake. Three days making contact and I was just focusing too much on this year. I mean, it's great to have another engineer, but we're almost out of avatar space, which we, of course, don't want to do. Or we don't want to be. That's three here and two here. So yeah, we're starting to excavate over there. Sure, if maybe made contact first and just left the engineer for now. It's not the end of the world. We still have plenty of time, even if the Doom Clock finishes. But it's not bad either. Good dark VIP mission for Tabcat. Uh, that'll be an interesting one. VIP missions are always fun if you play them, and uh, we do have a full team. Look at that. Almost everybody is ready. Batch of shame on Implacable for uh, being lightly wounded. And once we're at it, I tell you what. No reason not to reduce uh, the wound recovery time to make the batch of shame go away a bit uh, faster. Yeah, entire even is also reduced, so that's good. Um, yeah. Not bad, not bad at all. I like uh, the level up uh, to level 2 from Spectre and Hogbite, that's good. So we're making strides there. In terms of building items, that would be a powerful upgrade for the Marines. Yeah, but we can't afford that yet. We could afford Mimic Beacons, but we are so far playing without them. Uh, it's not important enough for us, apparently. Oh wow, reinforced armor is now take 14 days. Hmm, now we're going to skip that. It's a difficult one. I'll need to speak with Tabcat. I don't want to make that decision by myself. It's a decent breakthrough, but not sure if it is worth 14 days. Anyways, that's the end of today's episode. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. Uh, back to you, Tabcat. Uh, let's get that uh, dark VIP out of there. And see you in uh, two days. Bye-bye.